guys, you welcome to my channel. So today is going to be the first class of our jam series. Thank you once again for the 6,000 subscribers. We are going to 100,000 and I beg you, please, let's try as much as we can to get to that point. And the only way we can get to that point is by you subscribing, if you are yet to subscribe, and by you sharing the videos that those that you think they might need it. You might be an art student and you come across this video, kindly share to the science students who actually need it. And guys, science students, please don't be selfish. Nobody's uh, awarding you first in the uh, jam, so there's no point in you telling all that's your secret of success. Is that taking out? That doesn't mean that they are going to do it, and that's a secret. Without any further ado, let's jump to today's topic. We are going to be looking at measurements and units. When you talk about measurements and units, as far as jam is concerned, because all the topics you are going to be talking about now, we are going to be looking at it in terms of what jam actually want to test. And we shall be looking at 10 questions or links in the class, and you will be given 10 questions as exercise. After this video, check the description box, get the link to my Google Drive where you can actually download the 10 questions for this topic. Correction to those questions will be made in our next video by his grace. Thank you. When you talk about measurements, what exactly do we measure in physics? What we measure in physics are the fundamental quantities. And when you talk about the fundamental quantities, they are quantities that form the basic of measurement. I get to this now. And that's why all instruments are devised to measure fundamental quantities, except for few ones. Only few derived quantities can be measured directly. Are you getting where I'm coming from now? Therefore, when we talk about the fundamental quantities, we have the length, we have the time, we have the, the mass, we have the temperature, we have amount of substance, we have luminous intensity, We have a current. I will together now. These are fundamental quantities. And all these, they have instruments that we can use to measure them directly. But the focus of JAM is not on all these quantities, but on few of them, which are this length, time, mass, temperature, and the current. You see, amount of substance and luminous intensity they are less, less contributed to a lot of things in science. But when you talk about fundamental quantities in science, they are just three, based on their contributions. And that is uh, length, time, and mass. If there were a student and you are asked to list what? Four fundamental quantities, then you include what? Current. If they ask to list five, you include what? Temperature. Are you getting this now? In order of their hierarchy or usefulness. Is that taken up? Now, we are going to start by looking at the instruments that we use to measure length and what are the things that JAM actually want to test in this particular heading. So, the new headline is going to be the instruments used in measuring length. The instruments used in measuring length. Thank you. So, we look at instruments used in measuring length. Okay, so when you think about instruments used in measuring length, one, we have a meter rule. When you think about meter rule, meter rule is used to measure long length. That's the first thing they want to ask you. Do you know what they are using meter rule to measure? Long length. For instance, if I want to measure the length of this marker, I can use meter rule. If I want to measure the length of this ball, I can use what? Meter rule. The second thing they want to ask you is, do you know the reading accuracy of a meter rule? The reading accuracy, reading accuracy, the reading accuracy of a meter rule is, one millimeter 
that is 0.5 millimeter rather or 0.05 centimeter and i'll tell you what how do we get the reading accuracy for a meter root to be 0.5 millimeter or 0.5 centimeter is that the smallest graduation of a meter root is one millimeter and the reading accuracy is always the smallest graduation divided by two you get where i'm coming from now the smallest graduation divided by two is your reading accuracy. In other words, your reading accuracy is talking about the least possible error that you can encounter while using that particular measuring device. Am I making sense now? So if you are using meter rule, it means that the least possible error that you can commit is what? Is 0.5 millimeter or 0.05 centimeter. This also assists you to know the right decimal place to report your answer. And this is very important. When you have your reading accuracy, it tells you to what decimal place can that instrument measure. Now, if you are using meter rule, and the meter rule is a millimeter, you can only measure to one decimal place. Are you getting it now? One decimal place. That is, if I measure something now, and it is one millimeter, I'll write it as 1.0 millimeter. Or I measure something and it is 2.5 millimeter, I leave it as 2.5 millimeter. But if it is in centimeter, it has to be in two decimal places because the reading accuracy of a meter rule in centimeter is 0.05 centimeter. Therefore, your reading must also be in two decimal places. These are things that Jam is looking out for. So, if I measure something in what centimeter as 1.0 centimeter, this is wrong. Are we, are we together now? If I measure something as 2.5 centimeter and I report it as 2.5 centimeter, this is wrong. Are we together? So, this is supposed to be what? 1.00 centimeter and this is supposed to be 2.50 centimeter. So, your meter rule measures to two decimal places in centimeter and one decimal places in millimeter. Another thing they want to know about this measuring device, you know, we are talking about, we we'll talk about the usage. We use this to measure what? Long object. We we'll talk about the reading accuracy that determines the number of decimal places to report our word, our answer, or the least possible error that we can encounter using that particular instrument. In ground is what? 0.5 millimeter or 0.05 centimeter. Are we together? Cool. The next thing you need to know is the measuring accuracy. The measuring accuracy. So when you talk about the measuring accuracy, the measuring accuracy is to guide you on what answer would be accepted from you. Because it's not possible for you to measure something and I will also come to measure that same thing and we are going to have the same result. No, because of the parallax error and perspective error. The perspective error is that the way I view things, and I'm going to draw my own conclusion, you know the way you work, view things and you draw your own conclusion, of which that particular thing you are taking its measurement as its actual measurement. And that's what we look at in, uh, what is it called, in mathematics that we look at percentage word error. I get to that now. So in that case, for measuring devices, there is also what we call percentage error, and that is what we call measuring accuracy. So for meter rule, the measuring accuracy for meter rule is going to be plus or minus 0.5 millimeter, are we together? Or plus or minus 0.05 centimeter. That is the measuring accuracy. Do you understand that now? So please. Take good note of this. It might be confusing, but just get it clear now because even some past questions, they made the mistake by choosing one decimal place for centimeter. Now, what other things can Jam ask other this? Now, they want to test you for reading accuracy, but not directly. You get where I'm coming from now? They want to tell you on reading accuracy, but not directly. How can they now tell you if it is not directly? I'll tell you. Jam can come and tell you that which of the following readings? They are going to provide you with enough readings, like four, since the option is one, four. And you'll be asked that which of the following readings cannot be determined using meter rule. 
Now I'll take for instance, if I give a reading like 2.00 centimeter, 2.55 centimeter, or I'm sorry, 2.50 centimeter, 2.56 centimeter, 2.70 centimeter. So you can see all this value now. Examiner will now ask you that which of this reading cannot be determined. That is, if you are using meter root, you can never what get that value using meter root for your information. What they are trying to test there is what reading accuracy. And I even to what solve this question. Don't scare. It's possible for you to measure two centimeter. That is very certain, isn't it? So start from the two point zero centimeter. Then start adding the reading accuracy to it. Which is what? 0.05 centimeter. If you add 0.05 to this, you have 2.05. If you add another one, you have 2.10. Uh, 2.10. If you add another one, you have 2.15. Uh, if you add another one, you have 2.20. Down to 2.50. Uh, Are you saying this now? If you add another one, 0.05, you have 2.55. Am I making sense now? If you add another 0.05, you have what? 2.60. Are you seeing this now? You have seen that we have skipped one of these values. And which one is that? 2.56. So it shows that 2.56 cannot be determined using what? A meter root. And that is how they want to test your what? Reading accuracy. Am I making sense now? So that is about what? Meter root. So the next instrument used in measuring length is the vernier caliper. The Vanya caliper. Now, when you talk about this Vanya caliper, Vanya caliper is an instrument used to measure internal and external diameter of round objects. Listen, you know, I always tell you what they are using, what they are using it first. Note it very well. What are they using is to measure internal and external diameter of round objects. Objects. That's what we use was vernier caliper to measure. What is the reading accuracy of vernier caliper? Vernier caliper is more accurate ten times than the meter root. Are we together now? Vernier caliper is more accurate ten times than the meter root. Therefore, the reading accuracy of a vernier caliper is zero point one millimeter or zero point zero one centimeter. That is, vernier caliper also measured to one decimal place in millimeter and two decimal places in what? Centimeter. These things look like information that you don't need, but that is where examiner is coming for you. Are you getting this now? You'll be asking yourself, what is the need for those things? That is what examiner actually wants to test. So you have to understand them deeply. Now watch. If this is the reading accuracy, the measuring accuracy is now what? The measuring accuracy is going to be plus or minus 0.1 millimeter or plus or minus 0.01 centimeter. That is the measuring accuracy for a vernier caliper. I will recall before we go to the next one, what is it used for? It's used for what? To measure internal and external diameter of round objects. That's the only thing we use it to measure. The reading accuracy is 0.1 millimeter or 0.01 centimeter. And uh, the measuring accuracy plus or minus 0.1 millimeter or plus or minus 0.01 centimeter. Now for those who does not understand what plus or minus mean, let's take for instance that I take a measurement and the measurement is 2.55 millimeter. I get this now. Sorry. 2.5 millimeter rather because it's a millimeter, so it's supposed to be one decimal place. Take note. Now, if somebody takes this same measurement and that person has a 2.4 millimeter, and that person takes that same measurement, the person has 2.6 millimeter. These three measurements are correct. Do you know why? Because plus or minus means the actual value can be increased with 0.1. If it does, then it's going to be 2.5, 2.6 millimeter. Or it should be less than 0.1. If it does, it's going to be 2.4 millimeter. That is why this will be correct.
Is that taking now? That's what we call measuring accuracy. Am I making sense? Now, what's the last part? And let me ask you something. For example, now, to test you on the reading accuracy of a vernier caliper, they will ask you to tell us the reading on a given vernier caliper. Am I making sense with you now? That is how they test the reading accuracy of vernier caliper is different from the way they test it for that of meter rule. For that of vernier caliper, you'll be given a vernier caliper diagram and they will ask you what is the actual reading on that particular caliper. So let's see how we can get that. So look up, please. A vernier caliper has uh, two scales. How many scales? Two. Let's say this. This is just a rough sketch. Are you getting this now? It's just what? A rough sketch. Now, this is another one here. And this one has a small, small dot also. Okay? Now look up. This scale that I have here is called the vernier scale. The one here is the vernier scale. And the one here is the main scale. Now, the actual reading on a vernier caliper, actual reading on a vernier caliper is main scale reading plus the vernier scale reading. The main scale reading plus the vernier scale reading. That's the word, how they read a vernier caliper. Am I making sense now? Now, how do you know the reading of the main scale? Let's say this is what? Zero. And this is what? One centimeter. This is two centimeter. This is three centimeter. The reading on the main scale is the reading before the vernier scale. You can see that the vernier scale is starting from here. Am I making sense? So the reading that you have before this line is the reading of the vernier scale or the main scale. So you can see it is one centimeter that we have before this one before this vernier scale line. Therefore, the main scale reading is going to be what? One centimeter. Are you following? Yes, if that should be the case, what will now be the reading of the vernier scale? So, for the vernier scale reading, you check all this small, small line. Where any of this small line is a line on this main scale? Where any of the line on this vernier scale is the line on the main scale? That will be the reading for the vernier scale. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It does not at the eight is already what kissing. Are you getting it now? Therefore, the vernier scale reading is what? Eight centimeter. But you cannot write centimeter right now. Should be you have what? Eight, isn't it? Now, because the main scale is in centimeter, are we together? Because the main scale is in what? Centimeter, you have to multiply what? This one, which is 0 0.01 centimeter. You are multiplying this eight that you can't with 0 0.01 centimeter. So if you do that, you'll be having what? 1 plus 8 times this will be what? 0 0.08. If you add this together, you have 1.08 centimeter. And this is the reading on the vernier caliper. But if this one is in millimeter, instead of centimeter, if it is what? Millimeter. Then instead of you multiplying with 0 0.01, you multiply with what? 0 0.1. Do you understand that now? So that is how to calculate or test or answer question under reading accuracy of a vernier caliper. So let's move to the next one, which is the micrometer screw gauge. So for the micrometer, micrometer screw gauge. For the micrometer screw gauge, it's similar to the vernier caliper and it is used to measure the thickness of thin objects. An object that is thin, like if you have a wire now and you peel the wire, the what? The light uh, compounds that you have inside that wire is a thin object. If you want to measure the thickness of it, you can use what? The micrometer screw gauge. So, micrometer screw gauge is used to measure what? The thickness of thin objects and also to measure the external diameter of round objects. Also to measure what? External diameter of round objects. External diameter of round objects. 
I have my reason for repeating it. If you listen, Varia Caliper measure internal and external diameter of round objects. Am I right? Yes. Why what? Micrometer strip they only measure what? External diameter of round objects and thickness of thin objects. Am I making sense now? Correct. So that is the usage of what? Micrometer speed rate. What is now the reading accuracy? The reading accuracy... The reading accuracy for micrometer speed rate is 0.01 millimeter. Are you saying it's now? Or 0.001 centimeter. That's to tell you that micrometer speed gauge measures to three decimal places in centimeter. But two decimal places in millimeter. Please watch out for these things. They are very important. Examiner can test you in any way of all these things. They can give you reading and put it in the wrong decimal places. You should be able to fish it out. Am I making sense now? Now, what is now the measuring accuracy? The measuring accuracy is what? Plus or minus 0.01 millimeter or plus or minus 0.01 centimeter. Are we together, guys? Are, are we getting it? Okay, let's calm down. That's that about that. What is now the next thing you need to know about micrometer speed rate? Just like examiner will test the reading accuracy, with you determine the reading on the measuring instrument. The same thing goes to micrometer speed gauge. You'll be given a micrometer speed gauge like this. This is just a rough sketch. Are you getting this now? Might not be that perfect, but just take it like that. You get? Okay. Now, this is uh, micrometer speed gauge now. Now, let's see. I have uh, a line here like this. And uh, we are going to have a small, small line here. Now, let's say this one is 2 cm, 4 cm, 6 cm. Let's say this one is 20, 25, and uh, 30. You get away from now. Please pay attention to this. This is the main scale of a micrometer speed gauge. Main scale. And this is the vernier scale of a micrometer screw gauge. Now, the reading of micrometer screw gauge is just like that of what? Vernier caliper. That is the reading is going to be the main scale reading plus the vernier scale reading. So how do you know the main scale reading? The entire value that you have here. This one's what part here. 6 cm, am I right? So the main scale reading is 6 cm. How do you get the vernier scale reading? Look at this horizontal line. Any of this line that you have here that coincides with this horizontal line, coincides means that kiss it. Are you getting it now? Perfectly kiss it. It's going to be the reading on this vernier scale. So if you look at this now, this one is what? 25. Are we? So the vernier scale reading is going to be what? 25. But since this one is in centimeter, am I making sense now? You are going to multiply this 25 with 0.001. But if this one is in millimeter, you multiply this 25 with what? 0.01. Do you understand that now? And add this together, whatever you have is your result. Do you understand that now? So that's that about instruments used in measuring length. A quick recap. The instrument used in measuring length includes what? The meter rule. The meter rule is used to measure long objects. Then the reading accuracy is 0.5 millimeter or 0.05 centimeter. The measuring accuracy is plus or minus 0.5 millimeter or plus or minus 0.05 centimeter. Then the next one is vernier caliper. The reading accuracy for vernier caliper is 0.1 millimeter or 0.01 centimeter. It is used to measure internal and external diameter of round object. Then the next one is the micrometer screw gauge, which is used to measure the thickness of thin objects and the external diameter of round object. The reading accuracy is 0.01 millimeter or 0.001 centimeter. That is, it measures to three decimal places in centimeter. Why vernier caliper measures to two decimal places in centimeter? Why meter will also measure to 
two decimal places in centimeter. Clear? Clear. The next instrument is what? Time. What are the tools that we use to measure time? Our stopwatch is there, our pendulum bulb is there, the heart beat is there, the sound clock is there, the frequency method is there. There's no much to know about that except what I've just said now. Then the next one is your mass. What are the instruments used in measuring mass? We have what? The lever balance and the chemical balance. The chemical balance is also called what? Beam balance. Are you getting this now? That is for mass. You have to get this clearly now. If you are measuring mass, you either use what? The beam balance. The beam balance, which we can also call what? The chemical balance. You can use any of the two names. No, they are, they are the same thing. And the next one is what? The lever, lever balance. Under this, they will ask you what is the instrument used in measuring what? Weights. You need to understand the difference between the two. Instrument used in measuring weight is what? For weight, weight and mass, they are not the same thing. Mass is the quantity of matter present in the body. Weight is the gravitational X pull on the body. So the instrument used in measuring weight is what? The spring, the spring balance. Are you getting this now? Another question I want to ask here is that the instrument used in measuring mass is working under the principle of what? This one is working under the principle of moment. Why that of weight is working with what? Oops. Oops law. Do you understand the difference now? This one obey oops law, this one obey the principle of what? Moment. Now, there are some derived quantities that you can measure directly, like volume. Examiner might ask you that what is the instrument used in measuring what? Volume, because it's one of the derived quantities that you can actually measure directly. And the instrument includes what? Measuring cylinder and what? Measuration. Measuring cylinder and measuration. Measuration means what? To know the formula of calculating the volume of that substance. For example, if I have a cube now, the formula for calculating the what? Volume of a cube is what? Length times breadth times height. This is measuration. Do you understand that now? So that is that about measuring instrument. Now we can now look at fundamental and derived quantity. Fundamental and derived quantity. So I said it earlier that fundamental quantities, they are the basic quantity. The quantity that form the basis of what? Measurement. And they are referred to as the international standard accepted what? Quantities. They are seven in number. We listed it when we want to start the video. We are going to list it again. We have what? Length, mass, time, current, temperature, luminous intensity, and the amount of substance. Are you getting this now? Now, note this very well. What the examiner wants to know here is, do you know the difference between fundamental and derived? And that's why you should just master this seven quantity. Any other quantity that you see, other than this seven, just know that that quantity is a derived quantity. Am I making sense? If I receive some strange quantity, like radian, they can say radian. Radian is what? It's not strange, but it will be strange to you when you see it there. Are you getting this now? Because it's sand new. It's not like a quantity that we discuss in most cases in physics. Therefore, it's a derived. Any quantity other than this one, seven, they are derived quantity. But we again, the examiner wants to tell us the other fundamental and derived quantities is the fact that can you show the relationship between a derived quantity and a fundamental quantity? What we refer to as dimension of a physical quantity. And that is where we want to work. Lay hands on now. Dimension. of physical quantity. When you think about the dimension of a physical quantity, we are trying to establish a relationship between a derived quantity and a fundamental quantity. There, we have just four steps in getting the dimension of any quantity. Step one, you must know the formula of the quantity. 
Step two, you express that quantity as a fundamental quantity. Are you get? Step one, write down the formula of the quantity. Step two, express the quantity as a fundamental quantity. Step three, replace the fundamental quantities, replace the fundamental quantities with their symbol, with their symbols. I'm going to show you their symbols very soon. And step three, step four rather, write your answer in an exponential form. In an exponential form. These are the four steps that you need to take to get the dimension of any given quantity. Now, like I said, what are the symbols that they are talking about? The symbols they are talking about include mass, you replace it with capital L, length, you replace it with capital L, time, you replace it with capital T. Do you understand that now? That's your symbol. Now let's take a few examples of dimension of a physical quantity. Then we we'll call it a day on this topic. We solve our 10 questions. Then we take 10 questions as assignment. Check the description section to get the link to download the work, the PDF file of the assignment. Is that taking up? Cool. Now, let's take for instance that we are looking for the dimension of a force. Dimension of force. Dimension of force. Are we there? Now, what was the first step? The first step is to write down the formula. Force is given as what? Mass times acceleration. That's the formula for force. Step two, express everything as a fundamental quantity. So we have F equal mass multiplied by acceleration is given as velocity over time. Acceleration is velocity over time. How many fundamental quantities are we seeing here now? We have two, mass and time. Velocity is a derived quantity, isn't it? So this can now be called mass over time multiplied by velocity. So you need to ask yourself, because this step two, we need to break everything to fundamental. You now ask yourself, what's the formula for velocity? So we say, force is now equal to F over T multiplied by velocity, which is length over time. Everything is now what? It's now fundamental. So you can write it as ML all over T squared. Am I making sense now? So what is the step three? Step three now states that you should replace all these with their symbols. Mind you, mass will be replaced with what? Capital letter L. Let will be replaced with what? Capital letter L. And time will replace with what? Capital letter T. So we have T squared. Now, step four, which is the last part, says express your answer in what? An exponential form. This is where I want to teach you something. You know, in indices, if you have a raised to power minus n, it's the same thing as saying 1 over a to the power of what? n. Abi? So the same thing is what we are going to apply here. So the force will now equal to m l multiplied by 1 over t squared. Are you seeing this now? You can see 1 over a raised to the power n is what? a raised to the power minus n. Abi? So a now is equivalent to what? T. And what n is equivalent to what? 2. So if you are going to write it in an exponential form, this will become what? F equal ml t raised to power minus 2. And this is the dimension of force. Do you understand this now? Are we sure? Okay, let's move on and let's look at one more quantity. Then we start solving questions. And that will be work done. So let's look for the dimension of work done. The dimension of work done includes what? W work done equal force multiplied by what? Distance. Are you getting this now? So force, you need to break it down because that's step one, you write down the formula. Step two, you need to break everything down to fundamental quantities. Am I making sense now? 
So if that should be the case, you write this as what? Mass times acceleration times distance. Your distance is a fundamental quantity. Why? Because distance is the same thing as length. Displacement is also a fundamental because it's the same thing as what? Length. Is that taking up? So this will now be what? Times L. Now, the only quantity that is here that is not fundamental is your acceleration. Am I making sense? If that should be the case now, you can now write this as mass times acceleration is velocity over time, then it's times what? Length. Then collect the light terms. So this will be ml all over t multiplied by what? V. So V now is velocity. That's the force to do what? To express it as a fundamental. This should be ml all over t multiplied by L over t. Do you get this now? So if that should be the case, everything is now in fundamental state. So what's the next step? Step three states what? Replace everything with their symbols. So the symbol for mass is capital M. Length times length will give us length squared. The symbol for length is what? Capital L. So it becomes capital L squared. Divided by time times time, that's time squared. So capital T squared. And the last step, of course, is going to be what? ML squared t raised to power minus 2. Have you seen this now? Do you get this? That is how to go about dimension of the physical quantity. Now, let's take a break. Then we come back to solve our 10 questions. 10 questions. So let's take a break now. Okay, guys, now we want to look at our top 10 questions on this topic that we just concluded. Pay attention and listen. I'll be writing the options on the board, but listen to the question. The first question we are going to be solving here is jam question 1980, number one. Jam question 1980, number one. The question states that which of the following can be used to measure accurately to three decimal places in centimeters. Now, remember I told you in our first video when we are preparing for this exam, I said there are some questions that you should provide answer to them before you check your option. And this is the kind of question I'm talking about. You can see the question is coming to ask you what you know. Which of the following can be used to measure accurately to three decimal places in centimeters? Now, pause the video and answer yourself. Which one is that? Correct. Micrometer screen gauge. Are you getting this now? Because it is the only one, the only one measuring instrument that measures to three decimal places in centimeter. Vernier caliper measures to two decimal places. Meter will also measure to what? Two decimal places. But let's see the options we have. Option A, meter rule. Option B, ruler. See, your job is crazy. Meter rule and ruler, they are the same thing. So you should know that. That can never be the option. So the next one is what? Vanier caliper. Then the next one is micrometer speed gauge. And the last one is none of the above. So you can see our answer is actually what? Micrometer speed gauge. Can you see that now? So when you see two options that are actually the same, just rule the two out. They can never be the answer. Don't think Jam made a mistake. They can't. Do you understand that now? It's not echo. It is Jam. So they can't make a mistake. Is that taken out? Can we go on? Let's go on. Question two. 1992 number one. 1992 number one. What is the least possible error in using a rule graduated in centimeter? What is the least possible error in what? The least possible error in using a rule graduated in centimeter. They want to get you. Let me see if you are smart. Option A. Option A, it is what? 0 0.1 centimeter. Option B, it is what? 0 0.5 centimeter. Option C, it is 1 centimeter, 1.0 centimeter. And option D is a 2.0 centimeter. Now, there's something I want to quickly break down here. Remember I told you that the least possible error, it is what? The graduated scale, the least possible one, the least value on that scale. 
Are you getting it now? Divided by two. That will give you the least possible error. Am I making sense now? They now told you that a rule that is graduated in centimeter. If a rule is graduated in centimeter, it means what? The small, small line there, they are in millimeter. Are we? A meter rule in millimeter, it may not many the small places. Okay, thank you. It may not one the small places in millimeter. Now look at the options. We have 0 0.1 centimeter, 0 0.5 centimeter, 1.0 centimeter, 2.0 centimeter. What will be your right answer? Correct. 0 0.1. 0 0.5 centimeter because if you divide if it is graduated in what centimeter then it means the small small line there equivalents to one centimeter if you divide it by two your result is going to be what that 0 0.5 and that's why b is the right answer there do you understand that now getting it is different from we're looking for two decimal places because it's not in millimeter, it is absolutely what centimeter now. So it means that when we count 10 centimeters, we need to count 100 centimeters before we can count to what? One meter. So don't let us disturb ourselves. Can we go on now? So what do you see the way we get the answer? The smallest graduation divided by two is what will give us the answer. So question three now. The question three is from 1990, question number one. 1990, question number one. 1990, question number one. So it involves a diagram. So let's quickly draw the diagram. So we have one, two. Then we have this. Okay. So we have this to be two centimeter. We have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and uh, we have this. Okay? So, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. So the above is a diagram that we have. Look at this very well. Or you just take a first question now. 1990 number one. 1990. 1990 number one. Are we there? Okay. So the question says, what is the reading of the vernier scale? What is the reading on the vernier scale? How do we get the reading on the vernier scale, guys? Let's go on. The reading of the vernier scale is going to be the main scale reading plus the vernier scale reading. Am I making sense? Yeah. What are the main scale reading? Mind you, if this one is what? Two centimeter. Are you getting this now? It shows that what? This one is going to be what? 1.8. Do you understand that? 1.8, 1.9, then 2. 1.8, 1.9, then 2. And we told you, or we said it in the class, that... The reading before the vernier scale is the what? Main scale reading. And the main scale reading here is what? 1.8 centimeter. Plus the vernier scale reading. This is the vernier scale. We count it and see where the line here coincides with the one here. So we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The eighth line it coincides with what? With the one here. So we have what? 8. Since it is in centimeter, we are going to multiply with what? 0.0. .0 one and we are going to have 1.8 centimeter plus 0 0.08 centimeter now give us 1.88 centimeter do you understand that now <coughs> so the options that we have here we have option a 1.88 centimeter option b 1.80 centimeter option c 1.28 centimeter option d we have a 1.97 centimeter. So, guys, the right answer is what? Option A, which is 1.88 centimeter. Can we go on? So, we can move on to question number four now, Abby. Okay, the question number four states that, okay, the question is from uh, Jam 2009, number two. Jam 2009, number two, that's question four. The question states, Roman figure one, 
Okay? Roman figure one. We have a diameter of a small ball bearing. Diameter of a small ball bearing. Roman figure two. We have thickness. Thickness of a piece of paper. Roman figure three. We have diameter. We have diameter of measuring cylinder. Roman figure five. We have a length of a piece of wire. So I'm using the Roman figures now. Roman figure one, diameter of a small ball bearing. Ball bearing is what they call bodies. Uh -huh. Thickness of a piece of wire, of a, of a piece of paper rather. Then diameter of uh, measuring cylinder and the length of a piece of wire. So the question is that, okay, the question is that, the question is that, which of the following, or which of the above, rather, which of the above can be measured using micrometer steel gauge? Which of the above can be measured using micrometer steel gauge? Which of the following can be measured with micrometer steel gauge? How can we answer this question? Remember, we don't need an option this time around. Just let us look at it and see which one cannot be measured with micrometer steel gauge. When they say the length of a piece of wire, it cannot be measured with micrometer steel gauge because that is a meter rule. Abi? Then, diameter of a measuring cylinder. Diameter of a measuring cylinder is inside it. And internal diameter is measured with what? With vernier caliper. So this idiot cannot be there. But thickness of a, of a piece of paper, a piece of paper is a thin object, Abi? So we can measure it with what? Micrometer steel gauge. Diameter of a small ball bearing. A small ball bearing is not hollow. You cannot see the inside, Abi? Can you see the inside? No, it is what? A round object. So it means if you have to measure the diameter, you are measuring what? The external diameter. And micrometer steel gauge measures what? External diameter. So the correct answer is going to be the one with what? Roman figure one and two. So let's see what Jam is giving us as option. Option A, we have a Roman figure one, comma, Roman figure two, and a Roman figure four only. Option B, Roman figure one and a two only. Option C, Roman figure two and a Roman figure three only. Option D, Roman figure three and a Roman figure four only. Have you seen this now? So if K is not taken, if K is not taken, see Jambo, let me analyze these options for you. Option number one, Roman figure one, two, and uh, the four is obviously wrong because micrometer steel gauge are not measure what? Length of a piece of iron. So this is obviously wrong. It's not confusing. Then, option two, we are about to see that it's correct. Then, option C, which is Roman figure two and Roman figure what? Three. This can only be the correct answer if they are asking you for vernier caliper. That option C can only be the answer if they are asking for what? Vernier caliper. Then, option D, can also not be the answer. So the 50 50 is between what? This and this. But the right one is what? Option B. Can we go to question five, guys? Yes. Question number five. So question number five, Jam 1999 number seven. 1999 number seven. The question talks the inner diameter of a small test tube can be determined accurately using what, guys? Correct. Vernier caliper. We don't need their option. But let's check the option. Option A, a micrometer steel gauge. Option B, pair of, uh, of dividers. No. Option C, meter rule. No. Option D, pair of vernier caliper. And that's the correct answer. 1999, number 7. Okay, guys. Okay, let's move on. Question number 6 now. 1985, number 4. 1985, number 4. 
Which of the following is not a fundamental SI unit? The unit that is not the unit of a fundamental quantity is a derived unit. The only unit that is what? The unit of a fundamental quantity is going to be what? SI unit. Is that taken out? Alright. So option A, meter rule. Option B, ampere. Option C, Kelvin. Option D, second. Option E, radian. And the fundamental quantities include what? Mark, which is kilogram. Do we have it there? No. Meter for length, we have it there. Current, ampere, we have it there. Temperature, Kelvin, we have it there. Time, second, we have it there. So radian is going to be the right answer. It's not the SI unit. Is that taken out? So can we move on to question number seven? Yes, question number seven. 1978, number 10. 1978, number 10. The question says, to determine the weight of an object, to determine the weight of an object, you could use, remember, weight is not mass, so weight. What are you using to determine weight? Class. Thank you. Spring balance. So if spring balance is not in this option, then it means there's none of the answer that is correct. Is that taken out? So let's listen. A, use a beam balance. B, use a spring balance. C, find the force necessary to give it a certain acceleration. D, use none of these, none of this method. E, use any of this method. So the correct answer is there, spring balance. That's option B. Is that taken out? Okay, correct, guys. Okay. So let's move on. So the question here states that, um, Okay, 1980, 1998, number one, that's question number nine now, 1998, number one. The question says the physical quantity, the physical quantity that has the same dimensions as impulse is, the physical quantity that has the same dimension as impulse is, A, energy, B, momentum, C, surface tension, D, power. How do you answer this question? Let's see how we can answer the question sharp sharp for that one minute. So, which question are they talking about? The physical quantity that has the same dimension as impulse. So you write down your impulse. What is impulse? Impulse is what? The change in momentum. Change in what? Momentum. Abi? So let's see. This is capital M. Abi? Then velocity is what? Velocity is uh, length over time. So this is going to be what? Capital M, capital L, T raised to power what? Minus 1. That's the dimension of what? Impulse. So let's see the options. Energy. It can be energy. We don't need to waste our time. It's going to be what? Momentum. Why? Because momentum is the same thing as mass times velocity. And impulse is changing momentum. So momentum is mass times velocity. So the dimension will also be what? Will also be this. So the correct answer there is uh, option B. Okay, the last but not the least, the last but not the least, we are asked to find 1997, number 9, 1997, sorry, 1997, number 1, 1997, number 1, please listen to this question, it's the last question, so the question says, at what respective value, at what respective values of X, Y, and Z, would the unit of force, the Newton, be dimensionally equivalent to, be dimensionally equivalent to m raised to power x, m raised to power y, and t raised to power z? Now, let's get this question clear. Let me read it once more. At what respective value of x, y, and z would the unit of force, the Newton, be dimensionally equivalent to m raised to power x, m raised to power y, and t raised to power z. What they are simply asking you here is what is the dimension of force? So, let's quickly check that before we look at the option. So, this is force, Abi. Force is given as what? Mass times acceleration. Am I right? So, correct. Mass multiplied by acceleration is what? Velocity over time. So we have what? M over T multiplied by velocity. And velocity is what? Velocity is length over time. We do this in the class the other time, right? Yes. F times L, M, L. T times T, T squared. 
And this will just become what? Capital M over capital L over what? Capital T squared. If you write it in an exponential form, you are going to have M L T raised to power what? Minus 2. Now, we can now equate this with what? With this. So you have what? M L T raised to power what? Minus 2. So this one will raise to power 1, raise to power 1, raise to power minus 2. So X is equivalent to what? 1. So x equal 1. Y is equivalent to what? 1. And z is equivalent to what? Minus 2. So the correct answer is going to be the one we call 1, 1, minus 2. So let's check the options. Option A, minus 1, 1, 2. Can that be the answer? No. Option B, 1, 1, minus 2. And that's the correct one, the correct answer. So guys, Check the description box and pick your questions there. Give answers to them and we meet in the next class by his grace. Thank you for watching.